Hello everyone, this is Rob, the Baseball Time Traveler. Thanks very much for joining me today as we go back to the 1940s and early 1950s to review a comeback story that I think is something that needs to be told. I was inspired to start this project by a VR put out by Eddie's Cardboard Chaos, but I ran out of time, frankly. There was so much information and dedication I wanted to put toward this story. I wanted to do it, wanted to do it justice. So I hope I fulfill that, uh, that goal, and I hope you enjoy the documentary to follow. The story starts after I read an article in a magazine that I purchased many years ago, and this is from August of 1949, and it details the story of Eddie Kazak up until that point in 1949, but his story goes much further than that. Let's go back to the beginning. Eddie was born in 1920 in Steubenville, Ohio, but his family moved to a small mining town in uh, about 20 miles southwest of Pittsburgh called Muse, Pennsylvania. And Eddie grew up there and graduated high school in 1938. He worked occasionally in the mines, but uh, seemed to be getting injured too often. So he used one of his hobbies as a refuge, and that hobby being baseball. He loved to play baseball, and he and his high school friend, Andy Semenik, a name you'll hear later, uh, played sandlot ball together, played on the high school team together, and then after high school, graduating in 1938, uh, both of them started playing semi-pro ball and were trying to work their way into the minor leagues. As it turns out, in the early 40s, Eddie uh, ended up making uh, it into the Cardinals system and was with the uh, Houston Buffaloes, and Andy worked his way into the Pirates organization. And that's where their paths kind of diverged. In October 1942, after the Houston Buffaloes completed, completed their season, Eddie enlisted in the U.S. Army as a paratrooper and uh, went to Europe. Andy, meantime, injured his knee while playing baseball and was rejected for military service due to that injury. Eddie went through training and was deployed to Western Europe, France specifically, after the uh, Normandy invasion in the summer of 1944. Eddie and his unit were charged with the responsibility of flushing out some of the small villages as the U.S. troops were trying to overtake a German fortress in the port city of Brest, spelled B-R-E-S-T. And during that, that process, Eddie's uh, unit was being shelled uh, consistently by uh, German uh, 88s, big guns. And at one point, uh, Eddie's unit had to take cover in a building, and a shell struck and destroyed the building. And Eddie was trapped in that building, according to a story that his son relayed many years later. He was trapped in that building for three days. And the uh, he sustained serious injury to his right arm and was immediately uh, medevaced out and taken t uh, out of Europe, brought back to the United States, and ended up in Palm Springs, California to um, restore and rehabilitate his injured body. Uh, this is the El Mirador Hotel, which was converted uh, into a military hospital during World War II. The upper left picture there is, and they actually had an air base uh, out of Palm Springs. And on the far right there, that's the uh, hotel itself that had been converted, as you can see the American flag and there's a uh, army truck and some other personnel there. And the lower left there would depict what the interior of the military hospital would have looked like. Eddie spent 18 months rehabbing, undergoing several surgeries, and they actually had to remove uh, a chunk of bone that Eddie described about the size of his thumb from his elbow and was replaced by a piece of plastic. He was released in, in December 1945 and was determined to make, make a comeback in baseball, his true love. And despite what the doctors told him, he was going to proceed forward. So he worked hard, ended up 
that the Cardinals had won the 1946 World Series, so they were champions, and Eddie had a long road to go to, to overcome the injuries and to make it to the big club. But he persevered, and he started with the uh, Rochester Red Wings, but then was demoted to the Omaha Cardinals. But he said that it was actually very beneficial for him to be demoted because he was able to play more, and he continued to rehabilitate and strengthen that arm so that then he was then brought back up to the Rochester Red Wings in late 1948. And then uh, at the end of the season, the Cardinals were so impressed that he, they brought him up to the big club and he actually played in six games toward the end of the season and displayed some flashes of brilliance that led him to being invited to the spring training in 1949. Here's a picture of Eddie with the Omaha Cardinals. He is second from the right in the middle row there. Now we move to 1949, which is a year that Eddie will have always remembered. It started off, he reports to spring training, and he lights it up in the first few months of the season. He's batting in the high 380s, 360s uh, in, in April and May, and in June uh, had maintained an average well over 300. He was chosen after receiving more than a million votes chosen to the 1949 All-Star team. Here's a picture of the Cardinals team, and it looks like Eddie would be in the middle row, four from the left. And Eddie was playing with the likes of future Hall of Famers Red Shane Deanst and Stan the Man Musial. Pretty heady stuff. Here's a photograph that I found on the internet, and it was only dated 1949. So I did a little research. I was kind of curious as to whether that would have been Eddie or not. And as it turns out, I was able to look at some box scores based upon the fact that Jackie Robinson is wearing the home uniform. So this would have been a game played between the Cardinals and the Dodgers at Ebbets Field. So I went through several games and finally discovered that on June 2nd, 1949, this play would have occurred because Jackie stole two bases during that game. Thought that was kind of fun to be able to trace back and see Eddie and his connection to Jackie Robinson. There'll be a further connection later on where they kind of reverse roles. Here's another fun photograph. Uh, I can imagine the uh, teammates sitting in the dugout watching Eddie at bat, and he, he's just launched one to deep left center field. On the right there, seated, is Joe Garagiola, the famous broadcaster, who had a pretty good playing career, but really became well-known as a broadcaster. And on the far left, you'll see Stan the Man. Now we move to Tuesday, July 12th, 1949, Ebbets Field. A Major League All-Star game. An attendance of 32,577. And this picture, if you take a close look, that would be Eddie at third base. Here's some pregame photographs. On the left, you have Jackie, Eddie, Pee Wee Reese, and Red Shane Deanst. And on the right, very important photo, this game marked the first game where African-American players played in the All-Star game. You have Roy Campanella, Larry Doby, Don Newcomb, and Jackie Robinson. Now we kind of swing back to Andy Semenik. Remember him? Eddie's old buddy from his hometown. Well, he happened to make the Major League All-Star team, National League All-Star team that day as well. And they both wore number 21. Here's a picture of the program. And if you look at the photograph on the far right, in the upper right-hand corner, Andy's shown there. I'm sorry, Eddie's shown there. And right below him is Andy, along with Jackie Robinson, Johnny Mize, Pee Wee Reese, Ralph Kiner, Stan the Man Musial. And the only other non-Hall of Famer in that starting nine was Willard Marshall of the New York Giants. I want to make special mention here that there was another seriously wounded war veteran 
who made the American League roster. This would be Lou Brissy, who Scott at Stukes uh, Baseball Cards and Curiosities did a VR for Eddie's Cardboard Chaos. And I just wanted to make a special mention that Lou had also made that uh, 1949 team along with war veteran Eddie Kazak. And if you look at the photograph of the baseball card, uh, Lou's left leg is uh, oversized, if you will, and that's because he was wearing a protective brace. He had sustained a serious lower leg injury during World War II, but was able to make a comeback, and he came all the way back to make the 1949 All-Star team. Here's the starting lineup. As I said, six Hall of Famers. Pretty impressive group. Take it to the game. And there are their 1949 Bowman cards. Kiner, Musial, Robinson, Reese, Mize, and Spawn. And then Eddie did not have a 1949 card as a rookie. And Andy's card is there as well. I'll make special note that uh, Eddie Kazak was one of a very select group of rookies to make the National League uh, all-star team. And in fact, uh, there was no other Cardinal chosen as a rookie until 2001 when Albert Pujols was named as the a starting rookie for the National League. Here's an action photo of Jackie Robinson in the game and some more action shots. Stan the Man hit a home run in that game and Jackie scored a couple of times. And in the upper left there, you'll see Warren Spawn and Mel Parnell of the Boston Red Sox, who were the starting pitchers. As far as the box score goes, both Eddie and Andy played three innings. Eddie went two for two with an RBI and drove in future Hall of Famer Gil Hodges. Andy went 0 for 1 and was replaced by future Hall of Famer Roy Campanella, three-time MVP in the National League. Now we move to July 23rd, literally 11 days after the All-Star Game, and we have a, a very sad twist of fate. Eddie had just come from a historic appearance in the All-Star Game, two for two on top of the world, batting over 300, and on July 23rd, he was involved in, an, in a sliding incident that essentially resulted in a dislocated ankle, seriously injured ankle. And this was in a play that he was moving towards second base and he was writhing in pain on the ground. And Jackie Robinson, the second baseman for the Dodgers, tagged him out. There was kind of a controversial reaction, but the fact is that Eddie was called out by the umpire and Eddie was helped off the field. It took him about six weeks, but he did try and make a comeback toward the end of the season because he was on the way to being named for the Rookie of the Year. But uh, unfortunately, he was really never able to regain his form by the end of the season, was relegated to uh, pinch hitting roles, and Don Newcomb ended up winning the uh, National League Rookie of the Year that, that, that season. Uh, July 23rd, very uh, sad day for Eddie, and essentially what that resulted in was that he was then a, a pinch hitter for most of the 1950 season. Uh, the Cardinals tried to hang in there with him, but he kept, you know, just struggling along. And finally, uh, he was traded to the Cincinnati Reds in 1952. And if you recognize the person on the right, that's none other than his old high school buddy, Andy Semenik, who had also been traded from the Phillies. He played, uh, Andy played with the Wiz Kids in 1950 and was a pivotal uh, player in that run. And he, but unfortunately, he had lost some of his charm and was traded to the Cincinnati Reds. So here we move to 1952, and these two are now teammates. We've gone full circle from the Sandlots to teammates in Major League Baseball. As I said, Eddie really never made it completely back. The Reds gave up on him, traded him to the Detroit Tigers. That's his 1953 Tops card with the Detroit Tigers, but Eddie never played a game for the Tigers. And on the right, you can see the aged Eddie finished out his baseball career in organized baseball uh, in 1960. He stuck around in the minor leagues, bounced around, but uh, decided to call it quits as a player in 1960. And here's a little teaser. I'm going to be doing a separate video. I want to show you not only the cards you see in front of you right now, but I've got several other cards I want to show of the Hall of Famers. I don't, I don't have, 
um, any of those Bowman cards, but I do have several uh, of the Hall of Famers in other years, and I think you might get a, uh, some enjoyment out of seeing those cards. So I'll look forward to presenting to you uh, part two of this, uh, the player cards and some other memorabilia that I have related to Eddie and the game. And I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. And please feel free to comment after you finish watching this. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time.